Today's topic is on Kerberos. Kerberos is a network authentication protocol and is designed to provide strong authentication for client and server applications by using secret key cryptography. The following characteristics include, it is secure, it never sends a password unless it is encrypted. Only a single login is required per session. Credentials defined at login are then passed between resources without the need for additional logins. The concept depends on a trusted third party, a key distribution center, also known as KDC. The KDC is aware of all systems in the network and is trusted by all of them. It performs mutual authentication where a client proves its identity to a server and a server proves its identity to the client. Let's see how Kerberos works. Hello, my name is David. This is my partner, Janet. Today, we're going to talk about Kerberos. Uh, hopefully, with our explanation, you will have a better understanding how it actually works. So I'll act as the client. I'll act as the authentication server, the ticket granting server, and the file server. So the clients want to get access to the file server. So the client will type his or her ID and password and send a request message to the authentication server. The authentication server will then look in the database to see if the user exists. If the user exists, it will send two messages back to the client. Message one is the ticket granting ticket, which contains the client ID, the network address, the ticket validity period, as well as the TGS uh, session key. All right, this is encrypted with a TGS uh, private key. Message two is the contains the TGS session key. This is encrypted with the client's private key. So once the client receives those two messages, client one will forward the TGT, which is encrypted with the TGS private key, to the TGS. Then client will decrypt message two using the client's private key in order to obtain the TGS session key. And then it will forward the authenticator, which is encrypted with the TGS session key, and the authenticator contains two things, the client ID and the timestamp. The TGS will receive both message one and message two from the client. It will decrypt the TGT using the TGS private key. Once it decrypts it, again, it's gonna get the client ID, the client network address, the ticket validity period, as well as the TGS session key. Using the TGS session key is going to decrypt the authenticator and get the client ID as well as the timestamp. It's going to check both client ID and timestamp to make sure that they're both that they both match. As long as and as long as they don't exceed the ticket validity period. Afterwards, it's going to send two messages back to the client. Message one is the file server ticket, contains the four things I just mentioned. And the and that is encrypted with the file server file server's private key. And message two is the file server session key. And that is encrypted with the TGS session key. So then after the client receives those two messages, the client will forward the file server ticket, which is encrypted with the file server's private key, to the file server. And then the client will then decrypt message two using the TGS session key to obtain the file server session key. It will then forward the authenticator, which contains the two things I mentioned earlier, which is encrypted with the file server session key. Now that the file server received both message one and message two from the client, again, it's going to decrypt the file server ticket using its private key. Once it decrypted, it's going to get, uh, again, the client ID, client network address, ticket validity period, as well as the file server session key. Using the file server session key, it's going to decrypt the authenticator and get the client ID and timestamp. Again, it's going to uh, check both client IDs and timestamps to make sure that they match. And if they match and they don't exceed the ticket validity period, then everything checks out. It's going to send a response back to the client. Um, and then the client will then check the timestamp to see if it's correct. And if, it, if all is good, then now the client can get service to the file server. And that's exactly how Kerbos works. Hopefully you understand. If you want more information, check out our structured notes and check out our references. Thank you.